Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. Happy holidays. And in this short video, I want to talk about buttons, particularly button switches, and specifically something I've been wanting to review for a while called Raleigh Leaf Switch. Now, what is that exactly? Well, before we get started with that, I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of a button pop quiz, if you will. So let's get started. Okay, so for this, I want you to listen carefully to the sound the button makes. Now I have three different buttons. This is exhibit A, and so I want you to listen carefully to the sound this button will make. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's exhibit B. And here's exhibit C. Okay, so pretty simple quiz, right? If you're an arcade enthusiast or a collector, you probably know all the answers to each of those buttons. So what are they? Well, exhibit A is your traditional leaf switch button. Exhibit B, your traditional micro switch button. Now exhibit C, if you said it's a leaf switch button, you're mostly correct, but not entirely. If you said it's a micro switch button, you're not entirely wrong, but you're partially correct. So how could that be, right? Well, that button in exhibit C actually uses what's called a Raleigh leaf switch. And I'll get into that in a second, but for those of you that are not familiar with arcade buttons in general or how they work, let's just go over that real quickly and, and cover those differences. Okay, so here are examples of two of the most common types of buttons in the arcade world, if you will. Now, there are variations of each of these out there with little differences, sizes, um, you know, lights, all kinds of little variations, but ultimately these are just two generic examples of the two most common types of buttons found in arcade games. So let's start with this guy right here. Now, this is what I refer to and most everyone else does as a leaf switch button. Now, the reason why it's called a leaf switch button is that if I pull the button out here, it uses what's called a leaf switch. This is the leaf switch right here. And the way it works is that when you have the button in and you press down on it, these two leafs, these wafers right here, these metal wafers, they make contact, particularly these two gold points right here those are the contact points, those make contact. When that happens, that closes the circuit and sends a signal out to the game PCB, or the game board, basically telling it to do exactly what the button's wired up to do. So that's essentially how a leaf switch works, and also how most buttons work. Now, a micro switch button, on the other hand, is called a micro switch just for that. It uses a little micro switch. Uh, that's this white thing right here. And so the way that uh, this circuit is closed the, is very similar. You press the button down, but instead of two of those long metal wafers making contact, it's just this little tiny red tab right here being pressed down. And you can hear that clicking. That's the sound of the circuit being closed. And when that happens, same thing. A signal is sent out to the game PCB, basically telling it that you press the button and whatever it's wired up to do, it's gonna do that. So with that said, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages to each of these. And I'll start with the leaf here. Now, advantages. These buttons um, 
Well, before I even get into that, the reason why there's two different styles is mostly these were manufactured and made uh, in the 80s, um, probably well, even before that. But these were most commonly found in games, uh, you know, classics like Pac-Man, Galaga, um, let's see, you know, you name a game from the 80s, chances are there's a good chance that it used a leaf switch other than um, the Nintendo games. And I'm sure people comment and, and correct me, but these are most commonly found in classic games of the 80s. So with that said, advantages. Well, first thing is probably quite obvious, and that is, you know, just like at the beginning of the video, you could probably hear it. It's the sound. These are extremely quiet. So if I press on this, hear that? Pretty quiet. Oh, come on, camera. So yeah, very, very, very quiet. Let me just move that over there. Um, these leaf switches make the contact extremely quiet, but at the same time, the next advantage is that you can really customize these. So other than the sound, if I wanted to, I could adjust and manipulate these leafs, these, these uh, metal wafers, however I want. So for instance, um, let's say I want these contact points, I want the button to be triggered when it's only halfway down like so. I can, I can actually bend these, I can manipulate these leaves in order to do that. Or on the other end, maybe um, I want there to be more pressure. I want it to take more force to make these uh, contact points make contact. And so I can actually spread these, these tabs out so that I have to really press on this button to make it uh, have contact. Um, I can push them together so that I barely have to touch the button to make contact. I can pull them further down so it's only going to make contact when I push the button all the way down. So really you can customize this uh, all the way to exactly how you want it to feel. Uh, for instance, in my eyes machine, I have it set so that it makes contact up when you press a button about halfway down, about right about there. Um, because in that game, uh, it's very precise with how many with uh, the firing with shooting the, the shots and um, I find that I can get a really good rhythm going if I'm only pressing about halfway down I can kind of get this trampoline effect like this if you press it all the way down it's I don't I find that it's not quite as good so that's how I have the the leaves adjusted on my eyes machine now there are other games that I prefer to push the button all the way down before it's triggered but those are the two big ones, the sound and the fact that you can really manipulate these leaps. Now, let's talk disadvantages. Well, they're, first and foremost, these contact points can get, uh, can get quite dirty at times, and so they do take a little cleaning every once in a great while. Uh, but it's, it's pretty minor. The other thing is that once in a while, um, you know, I was talking about how you can adjust them. Sometimes they, um, uh, you, can, you may get a leaf switch that's been all, you know, bent to heck and you need to um, adjust it. So it's not, it's not uniform. Not every leaf is exactly the same uh, when you get them. And that brings me to my third disadvantage. And that is that since these were made in, in the 80s and common in the 80s, uh, for one reason or another, these are not readily available brand new. You, almost always you have to pick these up used. And so parts are not always readily available. Uh, with that said, you can still find them. It, it's not, you know, it's not impossible. There are, there are plenty of leaf buttons out there. Uh, so you can find them, but you're always going to almost, you know, always find them used. So that's, that's basically it. Otherwise, you know, they're great buttons. So let's talk micro switch buttons and their advantages. Well, first and foremost, you can find these brand new. Uh, since these were made uh, in the you know, mid to late 80s and, and onward, micro switch buttons are a dime a dozen. They're, um, they're easy to find. I mean, they're not you know, precisely a dime a dozen. They, they are a couple bucks, but uh, 
but they're very, very easy to find and readily available. Almost every parts store will have micro switch buttons. So the next advantage is that um, they're uniform. They're always gonna function the same. The button is always gonna be triggered when it's pressed all the way down like that. You know from the clicking that it's that the circuit's being closed or open, depending on how you have it wired up. Uh, for an arcade operator, these will save so many headaches. They're lifesavers because you can easily replace these micro switches if they go bad. And you know, you just pop, there's a, two little tabs here. You just pop them right out and boom, swap in a new micro switch and you're back in business. So they're very easy to work with. Uh, they get, you can get a ton of presses. I think it's in the millions. I don't know. I want to say 10 million presses or they're, they're rated for tons and tons of button presses before they're supposed to fail. So they're very reliable. Uh, disadvantages. Well, again, it's, it's just like at the beginning of the video with listening to the buttons, these make a clicking noise and that drives most people nuts, especially hardcore collectors and guys that like classic games. If you know, if you get um, a Pac-Man or a, a, let's say a Galaga that someone's uh, swapped out the button with a micro switch button, I mean, that's gonna drive people crazy. So that noise and that feel can really, uh, can really turn people off, so to speak. The, the other thing is that there is a feel. It, it is a crispy feel. It doesn't feel as soft as a leaf butt. So those are the big ones. Otherwise, they work just great. Okay, so those are your basic differences between a leaf switch button and a micro switch button. With that said, let's get back to what I teased at the beginning of this video, and that is the Raleigh leaf switch. And I'm pretty excited about this. I'm just going to move this leaf switch out of the way here. And I will take this micro switch and use this as, as an example. Because what the Raleigh leaf switch does is it allows you to take a micro switch button and swap out the micro switch with a, a, a modified leaf switch. This has been made to fit directly inside a micro switch holder. And so let's just do that here. Just pop it in like so. And boom, you now have basically a leaf switch in a micro switch button. And so instead of that loud clicking, you're getting the soft feel of the leaf switch. Now, what's cool about this is that I can go out and I can buy basically any micro switch button and have it act and feel like a leaf switch. It's really, really cool. And these guys, I think retail for like 275. So they're only a couple bucks. And uh, yeah, they feel great. I have these in my Tokyo machine and I've been using them uh, and I absolutely love them. Now, they're not perfect. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say that right now. These uh, don't have, you can't manipulate them quite the same as a traditional leaf switch. So there is that. Uh, they do have a slightly different feel. It's not exactly like a leaf switch. Um, it, it feels almost a little shorter, uh, but it, it's very, very close. And you can see that it is a plastic underneath here. So I can't really bend these leaves to the same degree that I could with a traditional one. You know, with, with a traditional leaf, it's all metal. Whereas this, there is some plastic. But with that said, this is pretty damn awesome. And, you know, for under three bucks, you can really use any micro switch button as a leaf switch button. So I, I completely recommend these if you're at all looking for something like that. The, the nice thing about my Toki is that I wanted to use brand new buttons. I was finishing up that, that project. And uh, in particular, I wanted to get some orange start buttons that matched the orange uh, um, leaf joystick that I, that I bought. And I could not find used orange leaf buttons. 
So this is the route I went, and uh, it's it's pretty darn cool. Again, I uh, Paradise Arcade sells these. I think there's one other site out there that that maybe does. But uh, when I bought them, they're two seventy five a piece, and yeah, they are pretty darn awesome. So uh, so with that said, I will uh, set up my camera and um, give you kind of a demonstration of me playing a game of Toki, so you can kind of hear. Uh, the sounds that the buns make because you know this isn't quite the same as the sounds if you're playing it on a cabinet so uh, let me do that and then we'll wrap this video up okay so I thought I would just play a little bit of an actual game to get you give you an idea of how the buns sound while a game is actually being played because it's a little bit different than just hitting the button all by itself right so I'm just gonna start a game of Toki uh, probably not even get through the first level just to give you an idea of how these buttons sound. So what I did was I muted, I actually turned the volume pot all the way down on the board so that you only hear the button presses. So with that said, uh, let's give it a go. And every button on here is using one of the Raleigh Leaf switches, just FYI, except the joystick, of course, but this is a Leaf style joystick. So you should only hear the, the button presses. All right, here we go. So yeah, pretty darn quiet, and I wouldn't hesitate to buy these again. I hope they keep making them, but uh, but yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how these things work. They're pretty darn nifty, if you ask me. And again, I think they're only like two seventy-five a piece, and I got mine from Paradise Arcade. Uh, you know, I don't get any commission or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend these, and uh, hopefully you enjoy them as well. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for subscribing to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.